Hello, Elisabeth Bolun. Hello, Rasesh Sonedin. Who is this man behind you? This is my father, Jan Olof Bolun. Hello, okay. hello. He's visiting us for the hello, weekend. Hello, Jan Olof. Uh, I guess he's my father-in-law. Yes. So what are we doing here? We are looking at Sven Alf's cows, or some of his cows. Yeah. And uh, they are still grazing outside now, towards yeah. the end of October. And here we have cows, and then we have some of the calves that are yeah. one or a bit more than one years old. Yeah. The two-year-old ones are few in our fields. Yeah. And these are, uh, all of them are a mix between dairy and beef, because he had dairy cattle. Yeah. And then he switched over to beef, and yeah. he did that by bringing in a beef bull yeah. and mating. So each generation he gets uh, more. So by a beef bull, beef. you mean uh, a breed of a cows breed. that is bred yes. for beef meat exactly. as opposed to milk. Exactly. Yes, and he uses Hereford mainly, I think. Okay. Um, so here you got quite a lot of, of diversity in color patterns, and also a bit in the. Some of them look more like milk cows, some yeah. look more like beef cows. Yeah. And that's because they are crosses in various stages, sort of. Yeah, yeah, and I guess some phenotypic variation of particular interest for a milk cow is that it actually transforms as much of what it's eating into milk. Yeah. As opposed to uh, beef cows, which are more optimized to be outdoors and they have a felt layer and a fur layer and so on, right? Yeah, so they bred them on different... Uh, uh, like traits basically yes. B different production traits yeah and then yeah. other traits will, yeah. will come along so when you take two breeds like that and then cross them then that's called the f1 hybrid right yeah first generation hybrid. so the first generation hybrid will be 50 50 on average that means when variation. she says 50 50 i think you just mean that every cow has two copies of of uh, of a particular gene yeah. called alleles Right. And on average, 50% yeah. will be from the mother, 50% from the father. So yeah. on average, a, a first generation mix will be 50% beef and 50% milk cattle genes. Yes. But this also varies within each individual because it's all kind of random. So yeah. it actually varies between a third and two thirds. But on average, yeah. it will be 50%. Yeah. And then the second generation, if you keep crossing back to the uh, beef, back breed. to the beef, then you will have on average 75% beef genes and 25% milk yeah. genes, yes. let's say. And then, uh, so then you're already getting yeah. quite close. And then another generation, yeah. you're down to, what is it, 87.5 yeah. yeah. and 13 point, something, something like this. Something like this. And of course, these are complex traits. So yeah. one can do selection already with the F1 and F2. So yeah. just choose the, choose the females that you really want to have more babies, yeah. basically. So I haven't asked Sven Alf, but I would assume what he has done is that the ones who go further in the breed, into the breeding will yeah. be the ones with the best phenotypes to carry on to the next generations. Yes. And the one with the most milk-like traits he would have maybe then sent to the butcher. Yeah. Uh, if he doesn't keep all of the females. Yes. Generally, all the males will go to, to meet yes. production. Yes. Right? Yeah, and the interesting thing here is that the Swedish Fjellku. Fjellku. Fjellku is uh, the mountain cow and that's yeah. been bred by your ancestors forever basically right yeah and they are interesting because they give milk yeah. and meat yeah. and they can eat local fodder yeah right so in most heritage breeds not just of cows but of other species too they are locally adapted and generally in old times you couldn't just buy soy feed right so they had to survive on small amounts of food yeah. be very energy efficient yeah. and generally you had a general purpose a multi-purpose animal yeah. so you wanted a cow that could both give you milk and could give you meat yes. because on a small farm you can't afford to have yes. one for yes. milk and one for beef yes. right so they the most of the heritage breeds also yeah. for chicken yes. so on they are multi-purpose and Gudrun and Eva were telling us because they have several breeds they have the Hereford and all the standard milk breeds but also they have oh the they don't have hereford so they have jersey, oh, jersey and they sorry. have serbia yeah, which is one of the most common yeah. swedish ones yeah. and then they have the fjellku the swedish red yeah then. and they have actually one individual who is part angus which is a meat breed yeah 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 that's right and what she was saying is that the motherly instincts are very strong in the fjellku, fjellku yeah. which makes it quite easy for you know yeah. Because some of the other br breeds, especially from the English Channel, which one is that, the uh, high milk one? Uh, some of them yeah. actually kick their own calves yeah. uh, uh, because they are sort of bred yeah. to immediately milk, not yeah. for the calf, yeah. but for the humans. 
which I find interesting behavioral selection. Yeah. It's I don't know if I want to if I want to yeah. really drink milk from a mother yeah. who kicks her own yeah. baby. And I'm just it's kidding. similar in chicken <laughs> or in hens, right? Yeah. So you breed them for production, yeah. and you take the young away from the mothers, yeah. and you make sure that the young survive, and you rear them. And of course, mothers who have bad mothering instincts normally their calves would die; they wouldn't yeah. survive. Yeah. But now their calves <laughs> might even survive better because the ones with poor mothering instincts might be mm. the ones who have higher milk yield. Yeah. Yield yeah. it can even be like that. So when you yeah. Yeah. When you select on a production trait, mm -hmm. other traits that are genetically associated with that trait will be dragged along yeah. and be more common in that population. Yeah. Whereas these heritage breeds, obviously, you kept the calves with so the that's, cows. That's called the hitchhiking effect, right? Yeah. In population genetics. Uh, yes, that's one version of it, yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. Okay. So, yeah, I think that's really good. Thank you for the presentation. <laughs> You're